بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, to all of our brothers and sisters out there who are new in this uh, faith of ours and this religion of ours of Islam um, السلام عليكم once again to you all and as Ramadan is basically just a few days away we want to take this opportunity inshallah ta'ala to hopefully give some direction in the sense of things that are going to be of benefit that are going to help you to inshallah ta'ala maximize on what Ramadan has to offer and bidnillah azawajal that you walk away feeling much better um, much more fulfilled so one of the first things we're going to say is that with regards to Ramadan being in the summer if this is your first Ramadan as a Muslim don't be worried don't let anything of the heat the long daylight don't let any of these things worry you because one of the main lessons that we learn within this blessed month that Allah the Exalted teaches us is how much we really are capable of that he helps to expand for us knowledge of ourselves and of our abilities by basically putting us under scenarios and circumstances that help us to really learn more about ourselves so you're strong alhamdulillah we praise and thank Allah you're capable and inshallah you're going to do just fine so don't worry so fasting Ramadan Ramadan when it comes to fasting we want to understand that it means to abstain and to refrain from certain things what are those things from consuming anything so therefore no eating no drinking no candy no bubble gum as well as um, in the sense of uh, in intimacy with regards to marital intimacy husband and wife um, to show affection of hug and kiss is something that is fine so long as it doesn't lead towards what can ruin it which would be basically the intimacy or copulation so or anything that would be close to it so we want to stay away from those types of things when are we going to stay away from these things from dawn until sunset that's the time frame that's the time frame. How are you going to know what the time frame is? Well, sometimes that can be a little bit difficult. Maybe sometimes it's very easy. For example, one of the things that we have here in the Dallas Metroplex area, our masjid, we have one of these beautiful prayer time schedules. And in it, they have everything of what you need to know of when Fajr comes in, all the way on through till Maghrib, which is the sunset. So Fajr is the time which referred to as Imsak. So you stop you're eating, you're drinking, and anything else starting at that time up until the time of Maghrib when you break the fast with sunset and then after that you're okay to eat, to drink, and to enjoy uh, whatever marital relations you have with your spouses. Some things that we can do within this month of Ramadan to really help us to maximize is to understand that first and foremost it is an intensive month of spiritual worship. So don't look at it just in the physical sense of thinking, man, this is really something that's going to, you know, uh, help me to have self-discipline and control because I'm focusing on my physical appetites of hunger and thirst and stuff. Yes, that is true. That in and of itself in the beginning may be a major obstacle and it's a major accomplishment when you're able to tame that. But these are superficial things that really help focus on the deeper, more meaningful aspects of our lives. So when we're talking about this intense month of introspection and of seeking to better acknowledge who God Almighty is, Allah, the one that we love and worship, we're going to become engaged in many forms of worship so that our relationship with God becomes stronger, that we better earn God Almighty's love, that we earn His forgiveness, that we earn His mercy, and that ultimately that Allah the Exalted, He blesses us uh, with being spared from anything of, of evil and harm in this life as well as in the next and that he bless us with the best of happiness in this life as well as the next now i use the word earn and somebody may say do we really earn it uh, in essence no because no matter what we do we can never really earn it but it's about showing proof to god almighty that we truly do love him by dedicating by sacrificing by obeying so when we're talking about some of the main acts of worship naturally it's the fasting itself now, it's one thing that we refrain from eating and drinking and marital intimacy or sexuality in that sense, but there's some other things that we also want to stay away from and refrain from. We want to make sure that our senses as a whole 
our sight, our hearing, our mouths, our bodies, that we're not engaging in anything of what is prohibited by God Almighty. So we want to make sure that if we're seeing stuff, that we're engaging our eyesight in that which is good, our hearing in that which is good, and so on and so forth. And likewise, we don't want to get involved in anything of arguing and of bickering and of insulting and God forbid of cursing and who knows what of things of that sort. We want to stay away from those things as well as staying away from food and drink. The other element is, is prayers. Now, prayers may be a little difficult for you because, you know, it's new and in Islam there's a lot of information. And so as the saying says, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, you want to make sure that you don't feel overwhelmed by saying, wow, there's so much, there's too much information, there's a new language of Arabic, and this is like just too difficult. Take it easy. Focus on the prayers. And part of the prayers is that you focus on at least the first surah, the first chapter, the opening chapter, Al-Fatiha, and that you can, inshallah, God willing, that you can memorize it in the Arabic as best as you can with the pronunciation, and that you know what its meaning is in English or whatever other language it is that perhaps you know you may know as well as English or better than English. So you want to make sure then that as you're able to come to worship, and this is what we're, we're, we're going to advise you to do, to do the best of your ability to come to the mosque or any mosque it is that you belong to, and that you engage in worship there, that you engage in the prayers, as many of the prayers as you can that you can perform together in congregation, otherwise that you want to be able to at least attend at night in the evening, part of what's known as the Taraweeh prayers, the prayers that offer you relaxation and rest, and that they give you a sense of peace of mind, that you're worshiping together in congregation. Now, the Friday sermons or the Friday services are also very important, the Jumu'ah, that's something that you also want to do. Whether you're in school or working, whatever your situation is, you want to try as best as you can to modify your schedule for that. The other thing is to read the Quran and to read it in English so that you have understanding of its meanings. So that you can understand what it is that God Almighty is giving us of direction and of guidance within the final revelation for humanity. Take it easy, take it slow, and try to have these things uh, be in a sense of priority that you're going to maintain them on a regular daily basis. Now, some other things that if anything you want to try to pay attention to because the month in and of itself is, is, is a long month. You can have, you know, mashallah, 29 or 30 days, depending on how you're going to be fasting and the community that you're a part of. But you want to also understand that fasting in and of itself, it gets easier with time. So in the beginning, the hardship, the fatigue, you know, whatever it may be, some things that can help you out uh, so that you can better experience it and perhaps, you know, not feel as downtrodden. Number one is that you want to try not to exert yourself too much if it is possible. So because you're fasting, because you know your, your body's going through a, a you know a different change in that sense, try not to fatigue yourself. So don't exercise while you're fasting. Stay, you know, don't go outdoors if you don't have to if you're fasting, just so that this way you don't bring any undue difficulty upon yourself of heat, of thirst, and anything else of that sort, and, and of hunger because of being physically active. Uh, the other thing is this, is that if you're a person who, like most Americans are, and you know, it's something I think that all of us have, is that we normally take in caffeine uh, on a daily basis. Coffee, perhaps tea, soda, whatever the case is. You want to try helping yourself by cutting back on that now. Just so that this way it becomes easier and you don't get the headache and who knows what. You try to lessen something of that dependency. And in doing so, uh, you can really kind of uh, do yourself a service and anything of these services that we're learning during the month of Ramadan, we hope and pray that we can recognize the value of continuing it even after Ramadan. Whatever is better of a lifestyle modification in Ramadan, it's better for us as a lifestyle after Ramadan. Um, with regards to the meals themselves, this is something that's also important to pay attention to. Now after you fasted the entire day and it comes time to break your fast, you feel like you can eat a horse. And sometimes you may even feel like I need to make up for the two, three meals that I didn't have during the day and the snacks that were in between. And therefore you feel like, man, I'm going to eat a whole buffet table worth of food. You're going to do yourself a major disservice if you turn your belly into an accordion. So as it's shrinking throughout the day, time to break your fast comes. Be easy on your stomach. Be easy on yourself. Focus on having um, a healthy meal, a balanced meal, but make sure that you give yourself fluids more than anything. So ideally to break your fast, 
you would have some dates in the way that the Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, did. Have an odd number, have a glass of water, and take it light. Let the stomach go ahead and do its duty of digesting that, of bringing in those nutrients, of keeping the blood sugars and everything nice and well. And then therefore, uh, you, you know, you'll be able to go ahead and offer your Maghrib prayer. And then after the prayer, maybe you can sit down and have something else of whatever it is. But take it lightly, take it slow, so that this way you don't rush everything into your stomach. And then after that, you feel like you got to pass out and just lay down and, you know, you've ruined any activity for the rest of the night. Keep your belly uh, light. You're going to appreciate that. The other thing is with regards to suhoor. Now, suhoor is the meal that is taken just before... Uh, Fajr time, just before you have to start fasting. Uh, so suhoor at that time is something that you want to take of a meal, even though you may say, hey, man, I'm not a breakfast person or I can't, you know, wake up that early and eat or whatever the case is. You want to make sure that you have something, even if it's fluids, so that this way you're not going to feel dehydrated, you're not going to feel, uh, you know, the effects of malnourishment or things of that sort. But again, it doesn't mean you're going to want to have, you know, uh, a burger or a steak or whatever the case is. Now, if that's what your meal is like, etc., that's fine. But you want to, again, make sure that you have healthy foods. Stay away from all of the refined stuff, from all of these processed things as close as you can to what Allah has created of fresh fruits and vegetables and whole grains and, and things of that sort, that would be fantastic. Ultimately, the month is meant to be a month of benefit, of pleasure and enjoyment. So you're not going to feel as if this is a burden. We should never feel as if it's a burden because to worship Allah for us is how we manifest our love for Him. The Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings upon him, he showed us how to do this in the best way possible. And so whatever it is that's happening, be a part of the local community, enjoy what it is that you're engaging in of worship, increase in your knowledge of this beautiful way of life that Allah has blessed us with. And ultimately, by the end of the month, you can look back at yourself and you can feel and see that you have grown, that you have bettered yourself. And God Almighty bless us such that we can continue what we started in Ramadan until the next Ramadan comes and that we continuously grow closer nearer and dearer to him Allahumma amin Allah bless you and keep you well wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh